my channel. I'm Louise and today I'm going to be doing a review on To Sleep in the Sea of Stars by Christopher Palin. I went into this book really, really wanting to enjoy it. Um, ultimately I ended up kind of disappointed. Um, I found the beginning to be really slow. I found the ending to not be that good. I found the plot to be unnecessary in a lot of ways. The main character Kira Navarez wasn't very interesting. In fact, I found her unlikable in most situations. Uh, the only thing I found good or redeeming about this book was the wallfish and the crew of the wallfish. So I want to start by talking about Kira Navarez, our main character. Uh, I immediately did not like her. Uh, the only thing that I found redeeming about her was her boyfriend Alan. When he was introduced, I was like, okay, this, she, he's going to be her redeeming quality. And then something happened, and I don't want to spoil it, but uh, Alan is no longer in the picture. And because of this, Kira became even more unlikable. Throughout the book, she does have a character arc. She does change. She becomes more likable, in my opinion. But then it kind of continues on into the ending, and then other things happen, and she becomes unrelatable completely, which I don't think is a very good thing for this character or for this book. So the other thing that I really didn't like was the plot. Um, the plot, it opens up with that, um, just a normal day in Kira's day-to-day -day life as a xenobiologist. Uh, on her last day on the planet that she's been studying, uh, she and one of her crewmates are sent to go and pick up a, dr a drone that had dropped off their radar. Um, she ends up finding a alien structure. She goes and investigates it, and then she interferes with this biological nanotechnology alien thing. Of course, the government gets involved and uh, wants to study her, study the Xeno, which has decided to start grafting itself onto her skin everywhere except for her face and her ears. So everywhere else on her body is completely covered. Aliens begin attacking and she escapes on an escape pod with a few other crew from that ship. She ends up getting rescued after I think a month being out in space by herself because cryo doesn't work on her. She's saved by the wallfish uh, and the rest of the plot is basically Wherever they are, they get attacked by aliens, they move to somewhere else, they get attacked by aliens, they go after the MacGuffin to uh, pretty much as far away as possible, they get attacked by aliens, they go back to a government location and they get attacked by aliens. It's just, it's repetitive and kind of boring and, I mean, other things are happening at the same time, but for the most part, it's really very forgettable. And now I want to talk about the good things. And really, the good things, in my opinion, were basically every character that wasn't Kira, and that's it. <laughs> like, I really liked Alan, Kira's boyfriend. Um, Major Shudder, I think is her name, from the start of the book, who comes back around the middle of the book. Um, I loved the crew of the wallfish. I really, really, really love the crew of the Wallfish. I really love Grigorovich, who's the ship mind. I really loved Falcone, who's the captain. I loved all of these characters, though. Um, all these characters that had their own backstories, they felt well-rounded and fleshed out, and they felt like their own people, and it, it was so frustrating to see all these really good characters, and then also have Kira be our main character, and it's like, she's not interesting. I don't care about her. Luckily, the wallfish is in a majority of the book, which made the book much easier for me to read. Um, if it was just Kira, I probably would have put the book down. As it is, the fact that the wallfish doesn't come in until about 20% into the book was a little distressing. I held off putting it down, not picking it back up. Uh, 
just because I knew that the wallfish was coming, just because I knew that I was going to want to read about the wallfish. And really, the wallfish and her crew are the only reason why I continued the book and actually finished it. Uh, I think I'd probably give this book, I think I did give this book at 3 stars out of 5 on Goodreads, but honestly Goodreads does not have enough nuance, and I'd probably give it 6 stars out of 10 if I was allowed to. I think it was, in general, a pretty good book. Reading the book was really fun, but thinking about it now, all the flaws kind of stand out really strongly. I, I think it's a good enough book to read, but I don't think I'm going to reread this one. I wouldn't reread this book for fun, I'd probably reread it because another book in the series is coming out, or it has something to do with, uh, um, with the wallfish and her crew. Unless an additional book comes out and it's about the wallfish and her crew, I don't really see myself reading any more in this universe. I do know that there's another short story or novella about the original discovery of this beacon thing, but I don't really see myself reading that. The fractals and this universe just don't interest me. I'm far more interested in the people of this universe. So, yeah, I am guess that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed my video, consider liking. If you want to see my thoughts on other books, uh, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!